How did a supposedly outdated biplane become one of the most successful combat aircraft of the Second World War? Stay tuned for the fascinating story of the Fairy Swordfish, the aircraft that sunk battleships and became the Allied aircraft type that sunk the most tonnage of Axis shipping during the war. Welcome back to the Militia Historia podcast and our series about the significant conflicts that have shaped our world. Today we are focusing on a rather unlikely war hero, an aircraft that looked out of date but played an important part in a number of key naval battles and holds a rather remarkable record. The Fairy Swordfish, affectionately known as the String Bag, was a biplane torpedo bomber operated by the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm during the Second World War. The nickname Stringbag was not due to its biplane struts, spars and braces, but a reference to the seemingly endless variety of stores and equipment that the type was cleared to carry. Crews likened the aircraft to a homemaker's string shopping bag, common at the time, which could accommodate contents of any shape, and that a swordfish, like the string shopping bag, could carry almost anything. Despite its outdated appearance and technology, the Swordfish became one of the most successful aircraft of the war, thanks to its versatility, reliability, and the bravery of its crews. Used in action from the abortive Norway campaign of 1940 through to the end of the war, the Swordfish was notable for its role in a number of key naval engagements and for playing an unwitting part in demonstrating an approach to naval aviation warfare that an Axis power would use to devastating effect. More on that later. On the 3rd of July 1940, the Swordfish was one of the main weapons used during the attack on Mers el Kabir, an attack by the Royal Navy upon the French Navy fleet stationed at Iran, French Algeria, to prevent the vessels falling into German hands. Twelve Swordfish from 810 and 820 Naval Air Squadrons were launched from the aircraft carrier HMS Ark Royal and conducted three sorties of attacks upon the anchored fleet. The torpedo attack which crippled the French battleship Dunkirk and damaged other vessels present, demonstrated that capital ships could be effectively attacked while in harbour. Shortly after the Mers al Kabir attack, a detachment of three swordfish were sent to support British Army operations in the Western Desert in response to a request for torpedo aircraft to destroy hostile naval units operating off the coast of Libya. On August 22, the three aircraft destroyed two U boats one destroyer, and a replenishment ship in the Gulf of Bomba, Libya, using only three torpedoes. On 11 November 1940, Swordfish flying from HMS Illustrious achieved great success in the Battle of Taranto. The main fleet of the Italian Navy was based at Taranto in southern Italy. In light of the success of the earlier attack upon the French Navy at Mers al Kabir, members of the Admiralty sought another victory under similar circumstances. The Royal Navy had conducted extensive preparations, with some planning having taken place as early as 1938, when war between the European powers had already seemed inevitable. Regular aerial reconnaissance missions were flown to gather intelligence on the positions of specific capital ships, and swordfish crews were intensively trained for night flying operations, as an undetected aerial attack during the night had been judged to be the only effective method of reasonably overcoming the defences of the well-protected harbour and to strike the fleet at anchor. The aerial attack started with a volley of flares being dropped by swordfish aircraft to illuminate the harbour, after which the swordfish formation commenced bombing and torpedo runs. Due to the presence of barrage balloons and torpedo nets restricting the number of suitable torpedo dropping positions, many of the swordfish had been armed with bombs and made a synchronised attack upon the cruisers and destroyers instead. The six torpedo-armed swordfish inflicted serious damage on three of the battleships. In addition, two cruisers, two destroyers and other vessels were damaged or sunk. The high manoeuvrability of the swordfish enabled the aircraft to evade intensive anti-aircraft fire and hit the Italian ships. The Japanese assistant naval attaché to Berlin, Takeshi Naito, visited Taranto to view the consequences of the attack. He later briefed some of the military staff who helped plan the attack on Pearl Harbour. 
The swordfish also played a key role in the sinking of the German battleship Bismarck in 1941, again proving that older aircraft could significantly impact a modern naval battle. Throughout the war, the swordfish operated from aircraft carriers and naval bases, performing a variety of missions, including anti-submarine warfare, mine laying and reconnaissance missions. The swordfish flew many anti-shipping sorties in the Mediterranean, with a number of aircraft being based in Malta. Guided by aerial reconnaissance from other RAF units, the swordfish would time their attacks to arrive at enemy convoys in the dark to elude German fighters, which were restricted generally to daytime operations. While there was never more than a total of 27 swordfish aircraft stationed on the island at any time, the type succeeded in sinking an average of 50,000 tonnes of enemy shipping per month across a nine-month period. During one record month, 98 tonnes of shipping were reportedly lost to the island's swordfish-equipped strike force. Indeed, the swordfish sank a greater tonnage of Axis shipping than any other Allied aircraft during the war. Their recorded swordfish losses were low, especially in relation to the high sortie rate of the aircraft, and also in light of the fact that many aircraft lacked any blind flying equipment, making night flying an even more hazardous operation. Its fabric-covered airframe and slow speed were seen by some as disadvantages, but these features allowed for greater maneuverability and led to a surprisingly high survival rate in combat situations. The aircraft type saw service through to the end of the war and remained in frontline service until VE Day, having outlived some of the aircraft intended to replace it. If you found the story of the fairy swordfish as fascinating as we did, please subscribe to our podcast. Your ratings and reviews are also incredibly helpful in helping others find us, so please do consider leaving us a five-star rating and review. And before you go, a quick update about our next series of episodes where we'll be diving into some extraordinary stories from an exclusive group of individuals, those that have been awarded the Victoria Cross. We're really looking forward to bringing those stories to you. So that brings us to the end of our current episode. So thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.